Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. Today, I'm gonna to show you some really cool tricks on how to use Zoom on your iPad like a boss. We're gonna start low budget, then a little more premium, and then we're gonna go full cowboy. So let's ramble. Hold up, face go up when I pull up. They all on me like at once. So most of us have been working from home for quite some time now, probably a bit longer than expected. And because of this, we've had to change the way we work pretty drastically. Face-to-face -face meetings have largely been replaced by Zoom meetings or any of the other meeting apps. And even though we're all hoping this whole thing will be over soon, I think it's safe to assume that some of these new ways of working will definitely stick. Even the staunchest anti-techies have had to invest some of their time in learning how to use some basic conferencing tools. And I think people have realized that you don't need to be in the same room for every single meeting and you don't need to fly across states or countries for every single meeting. In fact, a lot of them can be done online from your home or wherever you happen to be really. So what I'm trying to say is Zoom and all the other online meeting apps, they're not going anywhere. So you might as well embrace it and level up your game. Nobody likes that one colleague with the underexposed video and the crappy audio. Yeah, we're talking about you, Carl. And while we're at it, there's a mute button. Use it. Nobody needs to hear your dogs bark. Anyway, like I said in the introduction, we'll beef up our Zoom game in three levels. So let's start with the low budget level using some simple tips and minimum tools. So when you think of a video conference, there's basically four things that determine the quality. A stable internet connection, good video, good audio, and your surroundings. Let's start with the last one, surroundings. If you can, make sure you're in a separate room with the door and a window light. We need to be able to block out the noise from the house. Kids, dogs, angry partners, none of that. Now, a couple of tips about positioning. Number one, make sure the iPad is raised higher than you. So many people put their iPad on a desk or table, or even worse, hold it while seated. It's impossible to look good that way. You're exposing all of your three chins and the light from the iPad screen shooting up at you from the bottom makes you look like a ghoul. Also, when your iPad is on a desk, it's usually in landscape mode, which means the camera is hitting you from the super weird side angle, which makes it look like you're talking to someone else in the room. There's no eye contact. If you have no other option than a desk or a table, at least turn your iPad to portrait mode. Number two, don't sit yourself against a wall. It's bland, it's boring, it doesn't look good. Make sure you have some depth in your shot so there's something going on behind you, or at least there's some depth of field. It makes for a far more interesting image. You can kill two birds with one stone by positioning yourself directly in front of a window. That way you have the best possible light and you're likely to have a lot of depth behind you. If you have overhead lights like these LED spotlights, kill them. They're almost just as bad as light coming from the bottom throwing weird shadows on your face. Try to position your iPad so that the camera is raised slightly above your eye level. You can prop it up on a unit like this, or maybe a box, be creative. The iPad Pro has pretty good internal microphones. So between the window light, the camera angle, your position in the room and the iPad's mics, this is already a huge improvement. And the best part, it's free. But of course we can level up our game even further. So let's move on to a couple of solutions that are a little more premium and that you could use in virtually any type of room. To position your iPad even better, you could use a tripod or if you don't own one, you could order a cheap light stand from Amazon. Like this Amazon Basics one that goes for about 20 bucks. Then we're gonna add this tripod tablet mount by Newer, which is $14.99. And you can simply screw this on top of your light stand. It stretches very far, so it can even hold your 12.9 inch iPad. But remember, we don't wanna have our tablet in landscape mode, so we're gonna need the quarter inch hole in the back. Now, we're gonna have to angle it somehow, and for this, you can use a tiny ball head you can get for like five bucks. By the way, don't worry, there will be links to everything I mentioned in the description below the video. Right, so we have a rig for about 30 bucks that enables you to position your iPad anywhere and exactly how you want it. But let's say you don't have a window in your room or you're in a hotel room or whatever space that's dark, you're gonna need a light source. There's lots of little video lights available that are perfect for lighting your face when you have nothing else available. My favorite lights for this is the Aperture ALMC. I've had this for a while now, and this is one of the most versatile little lights out there. I'm not gonna go through all of its features today. I could do a whole video about that. It's RGB, 
It has effects, it charges via USB-C, wireless charging, it's got magnets on the back so you can attach it to many places, etc, etc, etc. But what's important for us today is two things. It's got a quarter inch hole in the bottom and it comes with a little softbox diffuser which makes the light less harsh and suitable to light your face. Remember, there's a quarter inch hole at the top of your iPad mount as well. So all you need to screw it on top is one of these adapter screws. You can buy a whole bag of these for a couple of bucks on Amazon. Just screw one side into the light and the other side into the clamp and boom, you have one perfectly positioned key light. These lights will cost you about $100. Now, if you're at a desk, instead of using a light stand, you can achieve the same result using one of these flex arms by Dinkum Systems. Simply clamp it to your desk or table, screw the iPad clamp onto it, and the rest stays the same. These start at $30 and of course they can be used for many other things. Now we have a good camera angle and some proper lighting, the next thing to improve is audio. The way to get better audio quality is using an external mic. A great solution is the Rode Video Micro, which is being used by vloggers all over the world, but which is also fantastic in our use case. It's a tiny shotgun microphone and it even comes with its own little dead cat. Now, since we've already used the second quarter inch hole in the iPad clamp, we're gonna need something to attach it to our light stand. These little clamps are perfect for that. Just attach the mic to the clamp and the clamp to your stand. This one by Small Rig was like eight bucks. Lastly, you need a little USB-C to mini jack adapter like this one, so you can hook up the mic to your iPad. Now you have great video and great audio. Another great solution that doesn't require a clamp is the Rode Wireless Go. They're a little pricier at $200, so we've definitely moved into the more premium territory, but it's a great all-in-one solution. Just connect the receiver unit to the iPad and clip the mic unit onto your shirt and you're good to go. They're battery powered and you can charge them via USB-C. And because they come in such a small package, you can take them anywhere. If you're at your desk, you can use a USB mic to get better audio. For that, you will need a USB-C dongle like this cheap one by Anko. Just plug in your favorite USB-C mic like this old school Blue Yeti, which is still an amazing mic, and you're off. Now, I promised you at the beginning of this video that we would go full cowboy. So let's go overboard and build ourselves a ridiculous setup. We're gonna stick with the table clamp because it just works great, but we're gonna flip over the iPad. Wait, what? Yeah, because where are the best cameras? That's right, on the back. But now you don't see yourself or your colleagues, not yet. But you can after you've hooked up this external monitor by Andy Cine. Position it right below your iPad so you can see your colleagues and talk right into the iPad's rear cameras. Now that we're using the good cameras, let's go all in on the audio as well. Enter the Rodecaster Pro. This thing is my favorite external audio recorder slash audio interface ever. And the best thing is you can hook this up directly to your iPad using nothing but a USB-C to USB-C cable. The iPad will recognize it as your audio source, so whatever XLR microphone you plug in will work, like this amazing Rode pot mic. I promise you, you will have the best audio. And while we're at it, let's make sure we have the best lighting as well. Forget about small video lights and let's blast this Falcon Eyes LED panel on our face. Obviously, all of this is complete overkill and a little ridiculous, but it's just fun to show what the iPad is actually capable of. All right, guys, so we've seen a bunch of options from no budget whatsoever to crazy over the top. I hope you can cherry pick some of the stuff you've seen to build a setup that works for you. So you're going to be the Zoom hero at your next meeting. If this video was useful to you or at least entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. I upload at least once a week. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.